Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back, Droid Life Show. Today, episode 193. It's uh, Friday, January 4th, 2019. I'm your host, Kellen. With me, Tim. Tim, say hi. Hey, guys. How's it going? Tim here. So, uh, happy new year, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we took a little holiday break. Much needed. Uh, we're back, though. It's a brand new year. Lots of uh, potentially fun stuff on the horizon, like... Uh, well, CES. CES is next week. Uh, we actually get there Sunday, so in like two days, Tim and I will actually be there. Uh, but there's other stuff going on, like Apple had a really terrible quarter. <laughs> I, I'm not that I want to laugh at Apple. I just think we should talk about maybe what that what their what their stuff means because uh, there could be some impact just in general on everyone uh, where the industry is trending. Uh, but there's some Google stuff to talk about, like a fancy new LTE band for the Pixel Three which typically wouldn't be something we get really excited about, but uh, this one could be could be kind of a big deal. Uh, Project Soli, which we haven't talked about in like two years, is making a comeback. Uh, there's news on Essential, uh, Samsung Pi updates, LG Pi updates, AT&T, we have a first speed test. Uh, and since we've been gone, AT&T's also created a new uh, 5G symbol that goes on phones that um, don't have 5G. We'll definitely laugh about that. And the Moto Z line might actually not be dead, which is surprising to me. Uh, maybe not to everyone else, but that's surprising to me. So, uh, oh, well, trivia, trivia back. Uh, we're going to do $10 Google Play credits to all winners today. If you are new around here at the end of the show, oh, and if you're listening live, uh, at the end of the show, we do trivia. Five questions, give five prizes to five different winners. It's fun. You should hang out and, uh, and uh, do that. So, uh, let's jump into first topic though. So CES, um, CES used to be called the consumer electronics show. Now it is actually just called CES. So if you hear somebody refer to it as consumer electronics show, you can correct them. That is not the name. The name is actually just the three letters CES. So, uh, every year, uh, first, second week ish of, uh, January, the CES happens in Las Vegas giant. It's a giant lowercase consumer electronics show where they just show off lots of uh lots of stuff that could be coming out throughout the year like tvs and uh they used to show phones but now that's kind of moved into february um we get a lot of fitness stuff we get a lot of robots and ai talk and iot talk and uh there's lots of car tech now which didn't, didn't used to be in the past uh it's definitely not really a mobile show anymore unless you're talking about accessories and things like that Either way, it's still probably, I mean, it's probably the biggest consumer electronics show on the planet, right? I mean, I'm trying to think of something that's yes. bigger. Like, it's definitely, There's like, we're, yeah, we're talking every year in Vegas. Uh, the numbers keep going up, but it used to be like around 100,000 people showed up for this. Now, I think we're, what, 140,000 people show up for CES? Yeah, I, think, I think it's more than that, but I, I, I don't know. That. I thought I remember it hitting 120. I th I think it might be around 130. Anyway, it's a lot, a lot, uh, over 100,000 people show up to CES uh, because it's still a, a big deal. Um, so we're going. Uh, we always go. Um, we'll get in Sunday. We'll be there for a few days to cover anything that could happen. So, what do we think will happen at CES? Uh, well, we'll we'll eat well for sure. Uh, I know that. Um, other than that, we'll probably get a lot of Google Assistant stuff, uh, like last year. A lot of Google Assistant stuff. Google Assistant was in everything, but now it's like really going to be in everything. Like LG's announced a bunch of stuff already, and they put Assistant in everything, including a smart mirror that doubles as like a wardrobe steamer. It's like a rich people thing, I think. I don't know who buys these, but it has Google Assistant in it. It's going to be in everything. Which is yeah. Fine. Well, not only are we going to see Google Assistant from those major players incorporating into new products, but you're going to see a lot of those smaller companies, those third parties, incorporating it into all of their speakers, turning their speakers into smart uh, speakers. For example, uh, Marshall and their Stan Moore and their Action lineup of speakers now getting Google Assistant. Uh, so I think it's going to be more of the same of that trend, where everything is becoming connected, uh, a la IoT. And so it's going to be the uh, another year of buzzwords, 5G, IoT, mm -hmm. etc. And I also foresee a lot of blazers and jeans combinations. Yes. Um, yes. By, by a whole ton of white people that just should not be wearing blazers and jeans. 
How could I forget the uh, uniform of the tech of the tech world of the male tech world? I should say blazers yes. and jeans. Tim, Tim and I won't be rocking blazers and jeans, but there will be plenty to make up for the fact that we won't be wearing blazers and jeans. Yeah. Like there's no reason not like you can do a button t-shirt is fine or even a polo yeah. for, you know, if you really want, but the whole ensemble of blazers and jeans and some of these jeans get pretty interesting. Like some are even like, there's like those affliction ones that are like bedazzled on the back yes. and then, or they're super bleached out. I'm like, what the hell is this? So I don't know. Yes, I do love the bedazzled blazers and jeans look. Um, it's amazing. Then encrusted shoes. We should probably, you know, we should do almost do like a special Instagram account just called CES Blazers and Jeans, and just oh, as wow. many as we could find. It would be it'd be pretty fun. It would get to a thousand posts pretty darn quickly. Pretty darn quickly. Uh, so, so yeah, so CES. Uh, Eric in the chat mentioned it's the event that all the tech journalists he follows complain about. Like we always approach CES a little differently. Like, don't get me wrong, this is about our ninth year, eighth year. I mean, we've been to a lot of CES. It's at least eight, I think. Um, and while we do a fair share of complaining, we usually end up having fun. I mean, we don't work as much, I think, as some of the people that go. I mean, some of the big tech sites, like it's their job to write eight thousand stories, whereas we cover sort of the smaller stuff. Uh, I shouldn't say we cover the smaller stuff. We call it, cover a smaller amount of stuff that usually is a bigger deal, I guess I should say. And then, like I said, we eat good and like have fun and that stuff. So I don't think you and I hate CS as much as a lot of people. But yes, a, a lot of tech journals really complain about CS. And that's mostly because everyone walks out of there with some form of like a death flu. Um, mm-hmm. Or it's just there's just too many people and you're just it's it's kind of overwhelming and gross and huge and a pain in the ass to get everywhere. So whatever. Um yeah, so Google Assistant for sure is going to be it might Samsung might actually announce on stage that they're putting it in their TVs, which is a huge deal for Google Assistant because previously Samsung was pushing I think Bixby and TVs. Didn't they try that last year? Um, and they've all, always pushed their own smart TV stuff and all this stuff. So them adding Google Assistant is actually a huge deal because a lot of people obviously buy Samsung TVs and LG's had it and they're bringing it back and they're putting Alexa in theirs as well. So we'll we'll see that everywhere. After that, like you know, like the standard players all have their press events that they have every year. Like LG will have a press event again, even though they've already pre-announced everything. Like Hisense and Qualcomm, but Qualcomm already announced Snapdragon 855. So this will be more like housekeeping, and they'll probably just retouch on some stuff. Uh, Huawei and Honor will probably announce stuff. I feel like they do every year. Nvidia has some stuff. Um, although NVIDIA in the last couple of years hasn't really been anything Android. I think the last time we got some big NVIDIA news that we cared about was the Shield TV sort of revamp with NVIDIA Spot, which never actually turned into a thing. Um, I'm trying to think who else has stuff. Like Dell is there, but Dell doesn't typically do a bunch of Android stuff, right? Uh, HP will probably be around doing lots of stuff. Like MediaTek's going to probably be around. So like everyone kind of has stuff. Uh, what we don't necessarily get anymore is like Verizon and T-Mobile and Sprint and AT&T doing big announcements where they used to. They often save those for either standalone stuff or in February at MWC. But either way, like you said, we'll get probably some 5G talk. Um, definitely more IoT, definitely more AI. I mean, it's it, but I, I'm, I'm struggling to find like what the theme I think is going to be this year of CES. And that's why I keep going back to assistant because every announcement we've seen, there's like something to do with assistant and then wireless audio. (laughs) You should see our inbox every day. We get like a hundred CES emails and I swear half of them are some sort of wireless earbud because everyone's adopted Snapdragon or Qualcomm's like Snapdragon, uh, like Bluetooth platform. So you'll get a lot of that. Oh yeah. Somebody mentioned Razer. Razer usually shows off some cool stuff. So uh, there'll be stuff and hopefully we get some surprises so that we can, you know, talk about cool stuff with you guys but otherwise yeah what was that project lydia from last year where they was like a laptop laptop and you throw your razor phone like that was Mm -hmm. cool um i mean it was just a concept and it still got best of ces from multiple outlets so i'm a little i'm still confused but um that's because the best of ces category award system is a fraud system (laughs) oh right i forgot um i guess that's why we don't do one but uh no so plenty of plenty of players in the building we just uh i don't know i think you're a little too stuck on this whole theme thing um 
I think we're just going to see a whole bunch of different stuff like always. I don't know if there's always like some years there is like IoT was the thing. I could, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of 5G talk and all that, but in terms of a theme, I don't know, just be thing connected, connected living, etc. Same old, same old. One um, thing I'm hoping for is that Google comes back with a giant structure. Remember last year they built a giant structure and then it rained for three days and no one could go in it. Hopefully we get another giant Google structure and then it doesn't rain. That would be great. That'd be dope. Yeah. They had a slide um, and stuff last year. Someone was asking uh, if we can grab beers because they're going to be a CES. Of course, if you're at CES or even in Vegas and you're around where we oh, yeah, are, hit us, hit, us, hit us up on Twitter. We are always down to stop working and grab a beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's no joke. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've seen a lot of uh, Sega's phone mentions. Uh, you never know. Sega's. Sega's, Sega's could make a uh, make an appearance. Um, somebody posted to Reddit, I think it was last week, that Sega's is like seeking more investment and telling people, investors, that... Uh, that they uh, are trying to build a phone still and they may release the V squared or whatever it's called. I mean, that, that phone is like four years old and they're still talking about like they may do it. I don't know what to make of Sega is I, I'm, I'm down to just like forever not talk about them again because that whole scam system embarrassment there. Yeah. But hey, if they show up, it'd be great to meet them and have a nice little chat with our, our friends at Sega's. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. We oh. tried that one year. I mean, I remember playing with their mirror <laughs> tech, and I was playing some Riptide or whatever on a TV on the phone, and and then they we were supposed to have a meeting, like a sit down, and then they never showed up or something. That was very yeah. peculiar. They were a little late, yeah, and then we yeah. didn't want to wait around to play Riptide, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, by the way, Carlos dropped two bucks in the chat. I didn't. I, I didn't miss you, Carlos. Carlos dropped two bucks in the chat. Says any ideas on a tenth anniversary celebration? Tenth. For us? For someone for else? For CES, I'm thinking. For, is it? Not CES has been around for 10, longer than 10 years. I'm, well, maybe he thinks our 10th going oh. to CES, but that would be a couple of years from now. This is our 8th, I think. I think it's our 8th. 7th or 8th, either way. Uh, Droid Life, this coming December, will have existed for 10 years. Mm. But I don't know. I mean, maybe we'll do something. I haven't really thought oh, about that. We've got to. We probably should. Ten years of droid life. Yeah, kind of crazy. I didn't uh, even yeah. realize. Yeah, 2019. December 2019 will be ten years of droid life existence. Holy Maybe that's what Carlos talking about. I don't know. We should probably do something. Ten years is kind of a big deal. Probably worth yeah. more than just a blog post. Yeah, Carlos is saying, for you guys. Yeah, well, yeah. thank you for keeping track, Carlos, because I certainly wasn't, but... We'll definitely do something. Now that I know, I will I will plan something very special. Yeah. No idea. Uh, guy in the chat says, Kellen, you told us those guys made all the parties that Sega's did. They used to throw lots of parties with uh with uh backer money. I don't I don't know if they have any left. They're asking people for uh for, for investments. Tenth yeah. anniversary fanny pack, says Brandon. That that could actually be what we do is a tenth anniversary DL fanny pack. Kinda like that. Here's the thing. Are you going to bring a fanny pack to CES? Uh, you brought it to Hawaii. Say. Yeah, I mean, Hawaii is kind of like a sort of a normal thing to see a fanny pack. Although, <laughs> That's true. in Vegas, you see a lot of fanny oh, packs. Oh, yeah. Too. You Man, see some this weird tough. stuff in Vegas. That's tempting. Okay. I'll bring the fanny pack. I just don't know if I'll wear it. Maybe if I if we go out one night and I'm kind of feeling fanny pack. Maybe I'll rock fanny pack. I guess I that depends on the mood and the night, yeah. It really does. And the outfit. I mean, it's an all-black fanny pack that I have with some white text on it. You could so technically really kind of... Yeah. You could yeah. tuck it, like, around a black shirt that people might not notice, and you could still at least say that you wore a fanny pack. Okay. Uh, Steven in the chat says, what happened to the Droid Life app? Uh, there was, at one point, a Droid Life app, like in 2010, I think, that died long ago. So if you've been using one since then, it was not an official app. I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I have no idea. There hasn't been an official Droid Life app in a really, 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 really long time. Yeah, that one was just, a, that one that was out from, I don't even know who did it, but that was just a, like a RSS feed, right? Yeah. Of our story. Yeah. yeah, at one point. And that company, whoever was supporting it for us, died. So then somebody else's hand made them. But. Yeah. 
All right. Anyway, so see, yeah. So uh, Tim and I get there Sunday. We will hit the ground drinking, <laughs> running, <laughs> running to our first appointment. And uh, then press day is Monday. And press day is this lineup of events where everyone has like 45 minutes to talk about stuff. Uh, the last few years, we've mostly ditched it because it has been worthless. Uh, we'll see this year. It might be it might be a little bit different. And then the show floor opens Tuesday, which is when we get to go like play with the show floor stuff. So that's kind of our schedule. Anyway, see, yes, we'll, we'll keep you updated. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So moving on to actual news. Uh, this week, Ev Leaks posted a picture of what he believes to be the Galaxy S10. Uh, this is exciting stuff. Uh, the phone is, uh, well, it looks like a Samsung phone. Uh, the front has uh, the little hole cut out punch hole camera in the top right corner. Uh, minimal top and bottom bezel. Definitely minimal side bezel. It, I mean, it looks exactly like a Samsung phone. So if this is the Galaxy S10, that wouldn't surprise me. This kind of matches up to all of the rumors and stuff like that. Uh, what do you think about this? Does it look like the winner of the century phone right here? Winner of the century? No. Um, it's definitely <laughs> definitely exciting. I mean, it's definitely something new. It's sort of like that Huawei Nova 4 that we saw, except the hole is on the right side. Yeah. I was trying to determine when he originally posted this if the image was sort of flipped. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it's definitely not because we can see from what I'm assuming is the Bigsby button on the left, followed by the volume rocker on the left. Um, so it and it appears to line up. I mean, the phone dialer app, even though that is not the one UI dialer app, um, is there in the bottom left corner. Um, however, in terms of like the look, the bezel, um, it's a sweet looking phone. I mean, it's all kind of blurred out, so it's kind of really hard to get the full picture. But... If that's it, I'm I'm interested. Um, I still don't know about the camera, like the hole punch placement. I'm trying to determine if it would just look cooler if it was in the middle or mm. if it would be better suited on the left um, and not anchored to the right. I just don't know yet because still, I've never seen a phone like this in person. I know some have with the Nova phone or mm -hmm. whoever you know, obviously had, took a picture of this device, but it looks cool and I have my fingers crossed. I can see that the display is curved, so I already know that uh, you're over it. Yep, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> what Tim's referring there to there is I wrote a piece like yesterday where I said I just want Samsung to stop making curved displays. I, I don't like that. Look, here's a here's an S9 right here running that, uh, ooh, that's looking a little slimy there, uh, running that One UI, which I really like, the One UI, but this whole curve thing, I, I'm not a fan of it in the chat are do you guys still love the samsung curve display thing i just like flat phones on the top that i like you can curve all you want in the back that feels great in the hand but sliding my finger around a curve i, I don't like it and this phone does have that and i wish it didn't and i've heard there's there's like rumors going to be a light version with a flat front i don't want the light version that's probably the crappy version so I just, I know like it's pretty split on this. Like people are like, you're crazy. The curve is like the coolest thing. It looks so cool. And I admit that in the article I wrote that, yes, it looks cool. I don't know what it does though. Yeah. See, somebody's like, it has pointless glare to it. And it does. There's like always a weird glare, right? Where the edges are. It sucks for screen protectors. I don't use screen protectors. It also sucks for cases, mm. accidental touches. It's basically just a cool thing. Like, it looks cool. And I I can totally admit that it does look cool. I just, functionally, I don't, I don't like it. Anyway, yeah, it's not going anywhere. Samsung likes to brag about their curved display. So. Yeah. Otherwise, I think this phone could be fun just because it's, like, Samsung totally skipped the notch. Uh, this is as full display as you can get. Uh, I, I'm assuming I'll just get used to that little punch hole thing, just like I got used to notches and things like that. And I like the One UI, so this phone could be great. Could be great. I, the, the thing they're doing with the camera on the back of phones, I don't mm. love. You know, like the Note 9 has like that giant bar across it, basically with 16 cameras. I don't love that look, but I don't really know how you make that look super pretty. I do kind of prefer Apple and Huawei's method of back cameras, right? Where they kind of line it on one corner side. I'd rather Samsung go that route than this thing in the middle, but whatever. I'm nitpicking, so. God, you're nitpicking. And otherwise, I think it looks it looks pretty good, actually. This is the yeah. first Samsung phone in a while. I think I'm kind of excited about just because 
their software got better. That's basically what it comes down to. For sure. Yeah. Um, two things. Wanted to touch on the vocabulary that maybe people are at. So the the Infinity O, we are not calling a notch. It is the, even though I called it a notch yesterday, I think, and that was my mistake. Um, yeah. Hole punch, cutout. You know, it's yeah. either a, a cutout or a hole punch. But not a notch. There's no notch. notch. Right. Yeah, a notch is connected to the bezel itself. Right. So, or the edge. Right. So just to clear that up. So. And then also, um, Russell in the chat said something very funny. He said, if the Pixel 4 adopts the whole punch design, it'll be the size of a nickel. <laughs> and I, I just thought that was uh, that was classic. Uh, but like Google will do something really stupid. It'll have dual cameras and they'll put like one in each corner. Like they'll, they'll do something to screw because whoever the designers are at Google, they go about 90% great with design and then they screw something up. Like overall, this phone I think looks simple and pretty in that minimal style. Like the pixel three, I think is a nice looking phone. And then yeah, the three XL you go, what? What were you guys thinking? And I think part of it is because Google is stuck on this like October release thing and they finish their phones maybe way too early or something. Oh, I'm not really sure. Uh, anyway, S10, I think it looks all right. I just, uh, the curved display thing, but whatever. I might, I may be able to get over that. Maybe it'll look like the most beautiful thing ever, ever made. It's possible. It's possible. It, you know, it, it's different and props to them for skipping uh, the, the notch. Yeah, I mean, they That's do impressive. deserve some credit there because they were clowning everyone for notches and then they 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 may have skipped it. So good stuff. Uh, yeah. Just quickly. Well, maybe not quickly, but uh, Apple reported a uh, well, okay. they, they haven't actually done their full quarter yet. They just lowered their guidance for their Q1 um, by like nine billion dollars or something like that um, because they uh, didn't sell very many. I shouldn't say they didn't sell very many. They sold a lot of iPhones and sell as many as they expected to. They blamed China. Um, they blamed uh, the fact that people are replacing batteries in their phones rather than getting new phones, which is really comical because like last year people said, look, if you just swap a new battery in your iPhone, it's like a new iPhone because the batteries for some reason were just slowing down phones and making them terrible, which is still such a weird thing to me. But people figure that out and then Apple started doing this cheap replacement or whatever. Anyways, apparently a lot of people are doing that because they're finding out they just put a new battery in their iPhone and it runs great. Um, so uh, not looking good. Uh, they're also probably pointing out the fact that because of that battery, so people just aren't upgrading and uh that's that's uh meant bad things for apple i just wonder how that translates to like, the rest of the industry and uh what i'm saying is phones are really good right now and i think people are really gonna stop upgrading as often um last year i used a pixel 2 xl almost the entire year and all these new phones came out right s9 note 9 LG released something, I think. There's OnePlus phones, and I used a 2XL almost up until the 3 came out. Partly that's just because that's the phone I preferred, but I mean, that was like the blue screen. It was ugly, whatever. It was a giant phone, and I stuck with it um, because I didn't feel like the need to switch. Like, I still liked it, and I think, I think people are doing that. Like, we ran a poll at the beginning of last year, like in January last year, and said, how often are you guys upgrading? And, uh, the top response was like, whenever I want. <laughs> and it was 41%. And then every two years was 33%. So there is there was a good chunk that don't. And then there was a yearly 17%, whatever. This year, so I just asked it because Apple said, look, no one's upgrading anymore. And 72% of the votes now said every two years or longer. How does that happen in one year? Uh, did all of the phones that come out in the last year, were they that good that no one wants to upgrade? And if they are, that's great. That means phones are good, but it was 41% whenever I see a new phone I like. And now this year it's the exact opposite. It's 72% says every two years or longer. That's wild. That's like a huge flip. So and it doesn't help that phones are getting more expensive. It that's seems. true too. I didn't even touch yeah. on that. Yeah. And there's a lot of factors I think playing into that. However, I can think back to a, at least a couple of years ago where it was like, okay, like all phones are good. Um, you know, like a lot of phones have great cameras. The performance is fine. You know, Samsung has worked on their skin, so it's like, you know, completely usable. If you go back to the S5, though, you couldn't use that thing for more than a year. If you did, I, I'm very sorry. Um, 
it just seems like phones are really good now, yeah. uh, which is a good thing. Right. However, that's not a good thing for the bottom lines of the phone makers who want people to continue buying new things. So, yeah, I mean, a slowdown in smartphone sales was an in- inevitable, I think, because everything's gotten so good. But uh, for financials and stuff like that, it's certainly not a great thing. But hey, phones are good. I, I mean, we're, we should be sort of happy that phones are good. Yeah, as Android consumers, phones are finally good. Yeah, as consumers, we should be we should be happy that our we don't feel the need to constantly upgrade. Because there was a while there where you bought a phone and the next month your phone was outdated. That's no fun. Because phones what were what still expensive back then. It's like six hundred bucks is still expensive for a phone. And now for sure, if you spend a thousand bucks on an iPhone ten, and the next year the ten S comes out and it's eleven hundred or something and there isn't that much upgraded in there why would you spend another thousand bucks i you'd you'd be foolish unless you just have money to throw away that do what you got to do but yeah and Mm. and it's happening now with samsung right their phones are really expensive google's phones are so i i as long as the stuff's still good i don't see why people should be upgrading as often so yeah and if anything maybe that'll lead to carriers manufacturers coming out with better deals maybe they'll find ways to get you to upgrade and then maybe we will just upgrade all the time i don't know how they're gonna do that but what's maybe. crazy some of these yeah i mean you go get a phone from t-mobile and you get a free 50 inch or whatever 4k tv yeah. it's just like yeah. uh, like a huge 4k tv is now an add-on for a phone like it's just kind of ridiculous and i think about that yeah and I imagine a couple of years from now, it's going to be even greater time to be a consumer of tech. So, yeah, the fact yeah. that a TV is a free bonus, like a 50 inch, I think it was, wasn't it? It was something crazy, yeah, like 50 a 50 inch? inch 4K TV. Sure, it's not going to be the greatest TV ever, but it's still a 50 inch 4K TV. 4K. Like, Jesus, yeah. pretty wild. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, All right, so in Google stuff, just a couple of notes. Uh, One thing, this actually dropped yesterday. So um, the guys at XDA noticed that an FCC document was posted that was um, was basically like a change submitted by Google for the Pixel 3 that said, in a future software update, the Pixel 3 will get access to LTE band 48. Uh, Now, normally, like an individual LTE band, we don't talk a ton about. um, And 48 is kind of a mystery. Um, So this is actually a pretty big deal. So band 48 um, is also known as Citizens Broadband Radio Services. You'll probably hear everyone just refer to as CBRS. (laughs) And it's basically the FCC used it previously for government purposes, like uh, radar is what it was used for. And they decided like, I don't know if they decided that it's just going unused or what's going on, or they just want to make some money off of it. So they're going to now commercialize it in a way where they'll allow carriers to use it in certain circumstances, whether that's to like beef up a signal at like, uh, say a sporting arena or something like that, or at an event that's going on. So they'll use 48 in certain spots. It's basically, I think it's like a pick and choose, like, or you have to say, I need to use it here. It could also be used in buildings in place of Wi-Fi because it's like better than Wi-Fi. And it can also be used to be combined with other LTE bands, carrier aggregation, right? To get you the super speeds and all that. And then it'll probably be used for 5G. So your Pixel 3, I'm not saying your Pixel 3 is ever going to have 5G. (laughs) What I'm saying is though, your Pixel 3, because Verizon's already started using band 48 in like at least one town in Florida, um, you'll soon just have a better connection. And there's not very many phones, I believe, that support 48 at all. The Pixel 3 might even be one of the first. Um, So anyway, you're going to have better connection and you haven't done anything you'll just get a software update it'll enable it and then one day you'll just get the best internet on your phone ever the best well greatly improved potentially it's uh it's one of those like sneaky things that's a big deal and it'll be a big deal once people have phones with it and you run into a spot the right now it's like no one's using it really except verizon in boca raton (laughs) It'll be, it'll be elsewhere. Yeah. So it's kind of one of those like cool sneaky things that happened at the end of the year that, uh, we weren't expecting to happen. So, uh, in related sort of Google news, uh, the guys at Android police, uh, from a source said that, uh, the pixel three light phones that have been rumored and leaked everywhere, uh, will possibly arrive this spring on Verizon. 
I'm not sure they added much to it, but uh, I mean, that makes sense. Verizon's had the exclusive on Pixel phones for the, since they arrived. Um, we've talked a little bit about I still don't really get the point of these light phones and they're probably gonna be overpriced but sure I actually thought they would just go to Europe or something or Asian markets I don't really know the US it seems like such a weird fit but whatever if people want to spend 500 on a pixel 3 light versus 700 on or 800 on a pixel 3 so be it spring though What's fascinating about that is like the phone's already in the hands of Russians again, <laughs> leaking in full, and we're talking spring. Like, does that mean April? <laughs> I don't even know. All right, uh, possibly fascinating news. So, 2016 Google I/O. That's almost three years ago. Tim and I were sitting in a hotel room, basically packing up our stuff to leave Google I/O because it was the last day. Almost no one goes over to the last day in terms of press. Uh, there's still some developers that hang around and the Google ATAP team, which I can't remember what ATAP stands for anymore, advanced technology and projects or something like that. Is that what it stands for? That's pretty good if you just winged that. <laughs> yeah, it did. Uh, they took the stage in and just started showing off like all the cool stuff they've been working on. And that was like the point of the ATAP team was to just, oh, hey, Google, uh, was just to do cool stuff, right? And a lot of times it never came like to become like a, a consumer good, but they're the ones that made that Levi's jacket. Um, a lot of their people came over from Motorola when they acquired Motorola. And then when they sold off Motorola, they kept the ATAP team because they were just doing cool stuff. Uh, but one of the things they showed off was called Project Soli. And Project Soli was uh, basically, well, it the version they showed off was like in a watch. And they put this little radar sensor thing down here and it could sense your hand like waving in front of it. And they showed like this really cool demo of like waving your hand in and out from it. And it was sensing that distance. Um, and then it was like turning volume up or down or whatever. And then you could do like some like finger gestures and you could get it to like move around the UI. And then they actually showed it implemented in a JBL speaker where you can move your hand in and out to adjust volume and do some other motions to turn it off and on and adjust tracks and things like that, which I'm surprised that actually hasn't happened. Well, it may not have happened because Google realized they needed to crank up the, I believe the frequency and the power usage of this solely sort of radar system. And and the FCC was like, yeah, you can't do that. That's not allowed. Well, they showed off enough um, evidence that this could be beneficial to the public that FCC is like, okay, we'll grant you a waiver to go ahead and do that. And that just happened on the last day of 2018. So just a couple of days ago. Uh, we don't know what that means yet. We don't know if they'll actually make a watch that'll do it. My guess is no, but you could see it like in a speaker. Like imagine, you know, we have the Google Home Hub that has the all the fancy ambient light sensors up top. The next version will probably have a solely thing up there so that, I mean, I gave an example when I wrote this thing up that says like you're in the kitchen cooking and you want to like go to the next recipe page you're following on home or you just want to change tracks or whatever and you don't want to yell at Google. You could just like wave your hand in front of it or do a gesture and it would adjust volume or go to the next step in your recipe. Like those things could actually be pretty useful. So uh, wouldn't be surprised if that happens. Uh, but another kind of like random interesting thing that we hadn't heard about in a couple of years showed up just this week uh, from Google. So kind of cool. Now that's exciting. Yeah. I just remember you and I were sitting in the hotel room like watching the ATAP stream going, oh, let's get our stuff together. And this dude comes on and starts showing that. And we were like, what? And you could hear like the little crowd there going nuts for it. it it's actually pretty cool. It was like, the, yeah, I mean, it's one of those kind of futuristic things. You're like, man, why hasn't someone done that yet? Yeah. And finally, like, and you're just, you're thankful that it's Google yeah. and that it's like in the right hands, I, I want to say. Uh, and it's not Apple who's going to not like a knock on out. I'm just saying like they'd make it all proprietary. And like, I just want people to be able to access this cool stuff. So, yeah. Uh, Roger in the chat says, doesn't BMW have that in their car, increase and decrease volume? I've seen somebody else suggest that. I, I honestly don't don't know. But they must because you're not the first person that said that. So they must have something, some sort of tech that's doing that. I did see a video on that. Um, it was some like crazy, like $250,000 Beamer. Um, I forget exactly what the... What I don't know what it is they're using because, of course, the salesman who was in the car showing it off had no idea kind of what he was talking about. He's like, oh, look, you can, you know, do things with hand gestures and whatever. <laughs> it 
it was weird, but very cool. Um, not sure if it's based on the same thing though. So yeah, I'll I don't know. If, I don't know if it is either, but either way, I think that stuff like that is very fun. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Uh, switching gears to Essential, who we thought was dead, is not. Dead. I'm just kidding. We didn't think they were dead. They keep saying they're working on stuff, and we just kind of go, "Are you? Are you really?" Uh, either way, last week we noticed that uh, the Essential phone went to out of stock on the Essential store, as did some of the accessories, like the adapter. Uh, for a brief moment, I think the camera was gone too, and so we kind of kept an eye on it for a couple of days, seeing if they were maybe going to restock. Uh, but it was odd since they hadn't really run a big holiday promo to run through stock. Um, and it never came back. And then we looked at like Best Buy and their unlocked models were all gone. And the Sprint ones were barely there. And Sprint's site was barely selling the phone. Amazon, it was all through resellers. It was, it was basically gone. So we reached out to Essential and they they confirmed that the Essential phone is officially gone. It won't be restocked. They will still sell some accessories. Uh, but the phone itself, not coming back. So, uh, rest in peace, little buddy. Oh, I got one right here, actually. Fired it up the other day when we wrote that up. Actually, I didn't hey, even turn buddy. it on. I just charged it thinking I was going to turn it on and then never did. You said you were going to use it. <clears throat> but, mm, nah. Yeah, no. I decided that probably wasn't going to be worth it. Uh, either way, it'll still get updates and all that stuff. They're just not selling it, but they are promising to continue to, uh, to update it. So, that's great. Uh, what they did tell us, though, in the statement, they said... Uh, we are now hard at work on our next mobile product and we'll continue to sell accessories and provide speedy software updates. So their next mobile product, whatever that is, it's rumored to be like an AI phone where you use your phone less and it just does things for you. Um, Stop. Yeah. Just make a good phone. Just re-release the original with, you know, a better display, less stuttery performance, et cetera, et cetera, better camera. It'll be fine. Yeah. It'll be a winner. We already told them what to do. Yeah. We wrote an entire post on it. Like, here's how you we make did. Essential Phone 2 Phone of the Year. We did they've actually got, do that. They've got the work right there for them. So. Yeah, we did actually uh, We did actually do that for them. So, so I, you know, who knows? And who knows when it's coming, all that stuff. But they, the Essential Phone is gone. They're working on their next mobile product. Uh, what that will be and what it will look like, I have no idea. Mm. Uh, all right, so in Android Pie news, uh, both Samsung and LG gave us some new timelines right. this week. Uh, Samsung improved their roadmap, right? Didn't yes. somebody get bumped up? Yeah, Note 9 and Note 8 were bumped up a month. Note 8 from March 2019 to February, and Ooh. Note 9 from February to January. So now Note 9 sits alongside, uh, alongside S9 and S9 Plus to receive Pi and One UI this month. And this month. Actually, yeah, I think I saw 8. in Germany the Note 9 might be getting stable. I think Sam Mobile reported that that in, in Germany. Stable okay. for the Note 9. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um and then so and then in March, still Galaxy S8, S8 Plus. So it, it's a solid timeline. You know, it's not bad until you start looking at um their tablet lineup and uh, A8s and all these other kind of like weird variant phone devices they have in other markets, but the big <clears throat> flagships uh, for Samsung should all have it by March of 2019, which is not bad considering they've got One UI on top of Pi and they've obviously put in a lot of work on One UI and there's still a little bit more work to do, uh, at least considering the beta that I was using on the Note 9. It was just, uh, I don't know, it wasn't all that impressive. I mean, it looks fine, but it's just sort of blah, blase. I so. will say I'm looking at the their last year, their sort of schedule, and they ran a beta around the same time they ran the Pi beta for Oreo uh, for the S8 and No8. Uh, let's see. It ended in January, and then it didn't roll out stable until March. March Verizon's got it and then AT&T and then Sprint T-Mobile. So in the US and then the unlocked one was like all the way in April. I remember everyone complaining about that. So I guess we'll wait and see if it rolls out to any like it'll start internationally obviously because it always does and then how it how that spe- speeds up in the US. I know it's still going to be like 7 months after Pi was released, but that could be a couple month improvement from Oreo to Pi. 
Samsung maybe you deserve a little little praise for that. Maybe fine, a little bit of praise, but not for <laughs> LG. LG gets me. Okay, yeah. So talk about LG. What did they? What did they? What did we find out about their Pi rollout this year or this week? I'm really happy you <laughs> asked. So we now know that Samsung isn't all that bad. Um, really, all LG has said is that the um, oh God, what was it? It was the G7. So the G7 Thin Q yeah. will receive Pi, uh, and that in in the first quarter of 2019. Yeah. Uh, but past that. The G6 is not scheduled to receive it in Q1, and neither neither is the V40 Thin Q. So, one, I mean, what they released two phones last year was the yeah. G7 and the V40, at least you know in terms of big phone releases, um, and only one of them is going to get Pi in the first quarter of 2019. So my assumption is that that big building they have, this engineering, this global update center, is empty, and it's or maybe be. just one to two people working on it just kind of hanging out maybe they clock in around noon leave around three uh and i don't know but lg's got something going on and it's not great uh so a lot of phones are still waiting for pi and we have absolutely no time frame of when they will receive it except for the g7 so think about that lg announce an entire they they sent out an an entire press release to announce that they i think you've linked to it let's go see what it says <clears throat> to announce so they had this this software update center and they were going to speed everything up and i remember with it they were like well, the first oreo update will be out at some point and uh and we we're like oh well good for them they're gonna try again uh they that it, it didn't even last like six months before now we're already like way 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 behind LG says they are investing significant resources into the software upgrade center, which will develop and deliver regular OS updates to their smartphones. Not only that, but this facility will ensure a consistent user experience on LG devices by continuously testing the stability and compatibility between hardware and software after updates. It's a lie. It's they a totally, goddamn lie. They totally lied. It didn't even, yeah. It, had, okay. it, it was nothing, so... I mean, I mean, it That's sounds like they announced that. And it actually yeah. sounds like the software update release schedule for them has gotten worse. <laughs> I, mean, I, would, I mean, Q1 for the G7, and that could mean the end of March, and then the V40, just no idea. Jesus. <laughs> it's pathetic. I, I would, you know, if you care about update... Well, I would never say LG had really good software to begin yeah. with. Um, and then on top of some somewhat bad software, if you care about updates... You just you cannot even consider LG like even if uh, you love uh, taking video on your phones and LG is known for some great video um, capabilities. But man, that software and I just I couldn't do it. I can't I can't recommend LG. So. It, it would be kind of tough because of the software because they don't seem to care. There was a they time where what was it, like the V10 maybe when that first came out, like it launched with whatever the newest version of Android was at the time. They were one of the first to ship a phone with Oreo. it. Was it Oreo? And we were super ex- No, it must have been the one before that, like Nougat, Nougat or something. Uh, maybe, I don't know. It was somewhere I, in there. But they and we went, oh, good for them. They're going to release phones with stuff on, on time. And then they... They've, they've quickly gone away because they were working close with Google. Maybe they were, weren't they one of the first to have Google Assistant on a phone? Yes. They built special custom commands into Google Assistant, and no, they don't seem to care anymore. Yeah, Ever. Brandon Fisher uh, makes a good point. He says, "When does LG get into HTC sales territory, <laughs> dude? It could happen quicker than LG realizes because at this, at the rate that they're going, I mean, it's so easy. We and we see from HTC's numbers that were." <laughs> reported this week where you can go from hero to zero in as little as two years so you gotta you gotta stay on top of your game and lg was very close at one time i think it was around maybe g3 g4 like there was still a lot of excitement around them and samsung and then the g5 it it was no good they right. tried again with the g6 <clears throat> the g6 wasn't awful in terms of like hardware but again their software is so painful uh, that it's just going to keep declining and thankfully maybe for them they have a very loyal it seems a uh, fan base of v phones so if their v phones are still good which I, I think the v phones are much better than the g phones i think that much is clear 
because they're not so much stuffing things now. They're just like way better versions of what yeah. the G series should be. It's extremely odd. Uh, they have a new president, so new year, new me. Uh, <laughs> LG, this is your chance, dude. Don't don't mess. I it mean, up. LG at least if they don't sell phones, always falls back on. Well, everyone buys our Television TVs and appliances, appliances, right? Yeah, and all the other stuff they make. But yeah, yeah the phone, uh, the phone uh, side of the business hasn't been great. We we hadn't we weren't actually going to touch on HTC, but was it today that yeah today you just wrote up that HTC had like one of the worst. Uh, one of the worst years ever. They didn't even make a billion dollars, right? Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, it, in terms like the whole calendar year, uh, I think there was a month back in 2013 where they made as much money in that month as they did this entire year. Um, so they're, they're just, you know, and we saw the numbers. We saw this downward spiral for HTC, and it's almost near the bottom. It's almost as you can't unless you start going, like, revenue negative. <laughs> So what's crazy uh, to me about HTC is you kind of go, I mean, we're talking six years straight of losses or something like that. Right. I mean, it's something I think it was 2013 was maybe their peak, I think. And you just go, all right, what are they going to do to maybe turn this around or, you know, get another spike. So maybe they'll have one good year and it looks good. Like they, they haven't had a single good year. I don't think since they started that decline it's amazing that a company can still exist who is really only known for making high end smartphone. I guess they sell some mid range stuff across the globe, but like that's what they're supposed to do. And when you're not doing that and no one's buying, I don't know how they're still around. Cause you can't tell me the HCC vive is actually making them any money. You can't. Like, oh no, v- it's losing. It's yeah, losing. I mean, <laughs> I mean, VR is VR was cool for like two years and, and people thought it was really fun to like do demos and stuff. And then it was too expensive and no one got into it. And then PlayStation came along and made VR stuff that uh, kind of crushed all the PC stuff because everyone had a PlayStation, a PlayStation four. I don't even know if PlayStation's VR stuff, they even care anymore. Right. Cause it's so irrelevant. It seems like, but so they bet the bank then on Vive, and as cool as Vive is, uh, you can see I still have it like hanging on the wall. I wonder how much dust is on that Vive headset behind me. Probably a lot. Uh, people just people just didn't care. So I'm I'm actually surprised. Uh, we talk a lot about how HTC like this has got to be the end, and I and I'm like I think we've kind of moved away from saying like this is their last chance. Like we actually mock a lot of the people that say, "Well, this is HTC's last chance." Like we've been saying that since like 2007 or 16 or something. I'm just surprised they're still a company. Like reporting numbers like this, when the one thing you make, uh, no one buys, I don't know how you exist much longer. I'm just surprised they're still around. Yeah. Sean uh, I was says trying to they look need up. to revert back to being an ODM. Maybe, but they sold all of their phone making talent to Google. So yeah, I don't, don't, I don't even know if they could do that. Exactly. Not good. Yeah. So the thing is that the company doesn't break down revenue in terms of this is VR versus this is smartphone. So what you're seeing is everything uh, HTC. So and that's still a lot of losses. Yeah. I don't even know how you can make have so much loss when you had like what one phone this year. And so I just assume that Vive is also not doing it, fantastically. It, it can't be. No. It can't be. A billion dollars was injected into this company. Yeah, they like sold all their engineers or you know, their high priced engineers, but like even a billion dollars couldn't save this company from right. like maybe trying to turn around and change course. I don't yeah, know. I mean, yeah, Google goes, Here guys, here's a couple billion for some talent and it that didn't matter. I mean, I mean, they bought their talents. So I don't know what HTC thought they were going to do after that. Oh, that's right. Pazno says they made that blockchain, blockchain from the Exodus or whatever it is. Man. Yeah. Oh, man. And I just love the fact that blockchain, no one's really talking about it now because Bitcoin can be bought for five bucks. Uh, <laughs> poor, poor blockchain. Poor Bitcoin bros. Uh, I will say when it was at its peak, like 16K or whatever, I bought five bucks worth, which is 0.002476, you know, worth of Bitcoin. Uh, I think I'm like down to 50 cents on the, my original $5 investment. Oh my Stupid God. Effing blockchain nonsense. Hey, probably not supposed to buy at the height of it, you know. So you should buy you know, now. I just, you should put five I just bucks in now, probably. Keep going up, man. Keep going up. But yeah. Good stuff. I love uh, it. HTC. Uh, HTC almost has no uh, 
U.S. like uh, presence oh, yeah. at all now. Um, all of their, I mean, at least like corporate speaking, uh, I don't know if they have anyone left in the U.S. at all. They might have a small office. I'm not sure. But like all the PR people you deal with, they're all gone. Most of their executives here, they've been gone. I, I think they basically shut down operations in the U.S. for the most part. Um, so I, they will probably make a new phone. I, I don't know how that'll go. I mean, in the last few years, they haven't made much of a splash here when they announced it. They did like a press event in Taiwan, did some briefings and that, that was it. There was like an online thing. They barely, I mean, it was that you could see them backing away. So I'm not sure what the, uh, what the goal is from HTC at this point, at this point. Red was able to talk uh, Verizon and AT&T to sell their crap. So I'm, uh, I'd be surprised if HTC can't do it too. But they gotta, they gotta bring that heat. They gotta bring that Illuminati heat, and it's the only way. It's the only way. I want to be in the room. I wish I was a fly on the wall, man. When uh, the red execs pitched Hydrogen One to AT and T and Verizon, and somehow yeah. at the end of the meeting, yeah. Verizon and AT and T said, "Oh yeah, totally. This is us. We got you." And the fact that both of them went, "Oh no, we're both gonna sell this." Yeah, I actually would love to see a, a replay of that meeting where they both said, this sounds like a great idea. We should sell the red hydrogen phone. It's going to be amazing. It's like 50 bucks a month if you get it on a payment plan. What a bust. So brutal. So brutal. But yeah, if uh, Red can get on there and OnePlus can yeah, now get in a HTC? carrier, HTC can't, Motorola barely can. It's, it's, there's there's a lot of stuff going on in the world of smartphones these days. A lot has changed. HTC's got a resume. Um, someone asked how much we thought the red lithium was going to be, that 3D camera oh, add-on yeah. mod or whatever uh, that uses the hydrogen one as a display. Kellen said a thousand bucks. I was like, dude, this is red we're talking about. The phone costs more than a thousand. Yeah. Um, this thing's got to be what, 3K, 4K? 3 to maybe? 4K, probably. Yeah, but we don't know. So, And we'll <laughs> never care. No. I don't plan on shooting, you know, YouTube videos in 3D or anything like or H4V. Which you can only watch on the phone. Why would you spend like thousands on this rig to shoot? We, we didn't actually talk about this, but so Red this week sort of semi announced their first mod add on for the Red phone. And it's this like 3D shooting H4V camera. And it's supposed to shoot that content, but you can only watch that content on the red phone so i'm not sure why you would shoot all this fancy h4v content to watch it on that phone which hurts everyone's eyes by the way and makes them sick and not want to watch it so unless they're going to invest in like an h4v tv somewhere or put it in movie theaters i'm not really sure what this thing is what is red doing i don't know they got they definitely got this own like which is totally fine i want to you know state that that everything that they're doing is like if they think it's for the best and you know so be it it's their company do whatever i just don't see their vision uh, i don't share yeah. their vision yeah. and i feel the need to keep people away from their vision <laughs> so yeah like, i it don't want what they're doing. well and it's very cultish which we it found is kind of cultish I mean, we had to hang out on their forums for a while after we posted our review and the other reviews were going up. These people are insane. Oh, we had a blast. <laughs> they legitimately are. It was a blast, though. I love reading conspiracy theories. Yeah. They're the kind of people who read something, don't agree with it, and then have to go after an attack of the people publicly yeah. that they don't agree with them. Like, that's some scary stuff. Yeah, it's very, oh. very scary. Yeah. Calm what down, people. to be alive. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about AT&T for a second. So AT&T's 5G network launched, I think, around the time that we stopped doing shows for 2018. Uh, so their 5G network is technically live. Uh, the only device they're, they've made available is a uh, Netgear Nighthawk uh, hotspot. Um, and I don't think you can actually buy it. You have to email AT&T and say, hey, can I test this? And they'll maybe send you one. Uh, Either way, some dude on Reddit got one and ran a speed test, and uh, it, it so far not 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 great. Uh, what was he in Indianapolis? And he ran a speed test and got 194 megabits per second down, 17 up, and then he immediately flipped it to 4G and got 187 down, eight up. So almost identical speeds. And he said he was what, right across the street or something from the 5G tower and Yeah, right across the street and it was up on top of like a three story building. So yeah. maybe over and up a little bit. 
not, but it should be, you know, it's there. It's not nothing obstructing, I would think. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure we should completely freak out and say that 5G is garbage. Like, this is the first tower. Um, huh. It's this first hotspot device. We don't know all the situation here around this guy, but I mean, yeah. it's kind of disappointing. Like, well, sure. it's millimeter wave. There's probably, he was probably the only guy attached to this tower. No one else is on this thing. No one else has 5G. And he gets basically what is a, and, and the speeds for 4G LTE are, well, the download's Solid. great. The upload at eight is embarrassing, but the download 187, if I was getting that on any carrier around here, I'd be happy. But for 5G, I would, and if I was the only dude, well, his ping is 77, which is kind of high for being across uh-huh. the street. Um, but uh, yeah, I would expect like 300, 4, 500 down, maybe. Oh. You're across the street. You're the only dude on the tower. On it's, day one of a publicly it's millimeter like, available. Wave. Nah, man. I'm going to have to say, I'm going to have to disagree. Like these numbers, they just, for me, they leave a lot to be desired, as I called the post. But it's just sort of a, it's one of those things that has to mature. It's got to get better. If you're paying, sure, if he had to pay for the Nighthawk and all this stuff, I think he said that he received like an engineering sample or yeah. whatever. So if you're out there and you're, you're contemplating, you're in an area that supports this FOG uh, network, maybe I would just hold off because I don't know if it's really worth it. If, uh, you know, at least according to these speeds, I'm not seeing any type of premium uh, necessity to pay. Uh, for the, for these speeds, definitely not yet. I I, I know why his ping so high. It's because the test was run in Kansas and he was in Indianapolis. That's probably why his mm. ping was so high. Either way, I mean it's still the same number on LTE and five G. It, I it is that. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in in semi related news though, while AT and T's supposed legitimate five G network is launched, they are uh, they're, they're going to do something really shady. I think they've actually already started doing this. So they've cre- they, you guys know they created five G evolution uh, like two years ago or something. And five G evolution is not five G. It's it's LTE advanced. It's four G LTE. It's LTE advanced. There's some carrier aggregation there and stuff, and it's like better LTE. And for whatever reason, they decided to call it 5G evolution because it was like, we're evolving towards 5G. I mean, it's misleading garbage in the same way that both them and T-Mobile did dub their HSPA Plus as 4G. It's the same garbage. Um, anyway, we made fun of them plenty and, and, and whatever. But they're taking it a step further. They're going to they're gonna put a 5G e logo on their 4g lte phones that can access 5g evolution um their 5g evolution network so we're still talking about accessing a 4g lte connection and it's going to show you a 5g e logo like talk about the most misleading crap i've seen in a while on uh from wireless networks and they do a lot of shady stuff but this is just this is next level uh, I'm actually for this. Uh, I think this is a good. <laughs> I think this is a good play on their part. Oh sure. Um, yeah, letting people know that um, they're running that new new, uh, or at least you know, uh, I don't you know. Nah, I can't even uh, make up uh, any type of lie. Um, yeah, I'm with you on this one. Uh, yeah, it seems like I thought maybe this would be illegal, uh, but I guess not. It seems like it should be illegal, but uh, apparently not. Yeah, and there are commercials that I've been seeing on TV. Like, my girlfriend and I were watching TV, and she's like, oh, what? Like, 5G's a thing? And I was like, no. They're actually advertising? I guess I've never... I haven't seen. I don't yeah, watch much Yeah, uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, but AT&T is definitely pushing 5G commercials right now on television. I actually think I saw someone say that they're getting sick of the commercials. Yeah. Yeah, Daniel said I'm sick of the 5GE ads. I did not realize yeah. they were advertising it too. Has anyone had their phone flip over to 5GE? I think it should just be a little minor software update. Either way, that's happening. <laughs> it's so bad. So you're going to have like LTE that'll sh- it'll show 4G LTE. Uh if it drop down, you might see an H+ plus every once in a while. And then depending on where you are, you might see a 5GE and think you're on 5G when you're not. What's really crappy about that too is once AT&T does roll out a 5G network pretty broadly, people will still be getting 5G connections and think they're on 5G. 
because they'll see commercials from AT&T that'll say like, our 5G plus network is live. And then you'll go, oh, well, I'm still on 5G, right? And no, you're, you won't be. Yeah, lots of people have seen that. Mm. Garbage move by AT&T. Yeah, Brandon says commercials were heavy during the Rose Bowl. Weren't you watching the Huskies? Uh, I watched some of it. I definitely don't pay enough attention while commercials are going on to see what's there. Fine. I mean, I think I watched like half the game. I, I can't stand Ohio State, so I try not to watch much of what Ohio State's no, I can't involved stand in. Husky, so it was a pretty just terrible game. To That's watch. true. I, I don't Duck like that either. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Final topic: Motorola's Moto Z line might not be dead. Uh, Moto Z. So we had the original Moto Z, Moto Z Two, Moto Z Three, and various uh, models of those. We weren't sure that Moto Z would continue on into a Moto Z4. And the reason I say that is because they made all these Moto Mods and they committed to three years worth of support for Moto Mods. So we thought maybe that either the Z4, they would change up everything or just discontinue the line since it's probably been mostly, I would say, borderline failure. I mean, I don't think a lot of people are buying Moto Z phones or the Moto Mods since they just don't make them anymore, like new ones that are useful at all. Uh, but we got from on leaks posted CAD renders of a Moto Z4 play. And uh, sure enough, looks like a Moto Z, any Moto Z phone, has the pins on the back, has the camera hump puck thing. And then the front, though, switched to uh, a little drop down, baby teardrop sort of notch looking thing. Uh, and that's kind of it. We don't know specs or anything. It looks like it'll be quite big 6.2 inch display, headphone jack. I mean, it's a Moto Z phone. They're not that exciting, unfortunately, because they don't give us any reason with these Moto Mods to think they'll be uh, worth buying. But 5G it, Moto Mod? Yeah, 5G Moto Mod. I'm assuming this will work with the 5G Moto Mod. If it doesn't, see. that's a massive failure. But I'm assuming, yeah, it'll, it'll have to. Uh, either way, Moto Z uh, lives on. I, I'm not excited at all about that. I wish I was. Every year I try to get amped up for the moto z line and and usually that involves me going okay show me a cool moto mod and then they don't they go no you could still buy like that hasselblad thing and uh some, some other speakers. thing yeah speaker like i don't care i got speakers in my house i don't need to use so we'll see yeah all right that's all i got for topics all right shall we shall see we you guys later do no, a little kidding. trivia should we yeah, do let's a little get it. trivia? Let's get it going. Oh, there's in here. the, there it is. There's the, <laughs> there's the colors. All right. Well, uh, topic's done. So if you're uh, again, if you're new around here, it means we do trivia now at the end of every show. Uh, trivia: five questions, and we will give prizes to five people. So one winner per question. All you have to do is hang out in the chat on YouTube as we do this live. And we'll put a question on the screen. Tim will read it aloud. You be the first person to type the correct answer in the chat. And then if we see your name with the correct answer first, we say you're the winner. And then you win. And then we send you prizes and things like that. It's great. It's really easy and simple. Uh, today we're doing $10 in Google Play credit to all five winners. So uh, after the end of trivia, you'll need to get in touch with us and we'll work out prizes. But that's pretty much it. We put a question up. You answer it as fast as you can. And uh, then you win fabulous prizes. Wow. That's pretty much it, right? Yeah. Uh, it, and, if you're, and if you're wondering what kinds of prizes we give away, the last show we gave away five OnePlus 6T phones. So it's not always just ten dollars in Google Play credit. We've given away accessories like toolkits for my fix it and phones. We've we've kind of given away some given away some decent stuff. I was really hoping you wouldn't bring up the OnePlus Six Cs because ten dollars Google Play credit is quite the drop off from five phones. <laughs> but that's okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, we did a special uh, Christmas sort of show where it we was. wanted to uh, really give away some good stuff. Uh, yeah. Speaking of that, we're actually giving away another OnePlus Six T on the site right oh, now. Yeah. So if you're listening live, just go. It's probably still on the front page, uh, but you can enter to win a OnePlus Six T. And we're gonna give it yeah. away in like one an hour, hour. fifty four minutes. <laughs> yeah. So. So if you're listening live and you haven't uh, haven't done that, you should you should probably enter. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Clinton, don't worry. You can insult me all you want. You are still eligible to win trivia today. <laughs> um, nerd is not a, an insult in my book. So anyway, uh, I'm ready for question number one. If you are ready for question number one. Uh, yeah, I'm ready for question number one. It's well, let's uh, kick it on. question number one. Yeah, it's going up. 
now. Little CES trivia for you guys. What year did Michael Bay have his infamous CES meltdown? Uh, Michael, the curve. <laughs> and then, the, the curve? Yeah. <laughs> that was so brutal. Oh, man. I'm seeing Brandon Fisher. See Brandon, with the yep. Answer of 2014. 2014. We were there. We were, we we were, were in the We were sitting just crowd. right right of stage, yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was the greatest moment of my life. Uh, <laughs> Brandon Fisher, though, with the correct 2014. Uh, yeah, yeah. for those who don't remember, uh, Samsung brought Michael Bay on stage to sh- help show off their new TVs. And the dude just froze on stage. <laughs> he and I, he blamed his teleprompter, I think. Uh, and he was off. just not ca- uh, capable of winging it at all. Uh, and just froze and goes, I-, I can't do this. And just like stormed off the stage. And the <laughs> Samsung executive was like, Michael Bay, everyone. It's <laughs> super awkward, but the whole you should. There's YouTube videos of it. If you have not seen it, you should. It's pretty funny, actually. Oh man, it was Michael good. the the curve. <laughs> so <laughs> great. Uh, <laughs> Poor Michael Bay. Poor All right. Michael Bay. All right. Congratulations, Brandon. Let's go ahead and number two, please. Question number two going up now. Ooh, what was the initial launch price for the essential phone? So we've seen it come down quite a bit, uh, and you could even buy it for two hundred fifty dollars at one point. But yes, what could. was the initial launch price for the essential phone? Up, oh, I'm seeing Connor Mills. Connor Mills got that. Yep. Nice, <laughs> Connor Mills with the correct answer of six ninety nine. Yeah, Chris and Trevor had the seven ninety nine. You were just a hundred bucks off. It was seven hundred bucks. I'm surprised it wasn't more because it was such a weirdly priced phone. But yeah, Connor six ninety nine. Congratulations! Right on the button. Yeah, it's so man. funny because there was this. There was a lot of talk at that time about, man, that's that's kind of expensive. And Andy Rubin was like, see. "We're gonna make this an exclusive phone. We're gonna price it like an exclusive phone. It's gonna be expensive." And we went, "Yeah, seven hundred bucks is pretty expensive." Now <laughs> that almost seems like a bargain phone. Uh, and then of course they dropped the price quickly to five hundred bucks, I think. But Damn. yeah, at the time we were like seven hundred bucks. That's really expensive. Yeah. <laughs> now everything's everything starts at eight. Good. Good. Stuff. All right. Question okay. number three, please. Question number three going up now. What processor is reported to power the Pixel Three Lite? What processor is reported to power the Pixel Three Lite? Uh. What? Brett Wright? Was Brett Wright first with it? Sorry, I looked away just for a second. Wait, no, 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 no. Excuse me. Trevor McGrath. By like a mile, I was way off. Wait, nope. What the hell? You guys are way too fast. Brett Wright. I think it's Brett. Okay, Brett Wright with the correct answer of the Snapdragon 670. Oh, man. Brett Wright confused me because he put it in twice. And so I'm like, uh, anyway. (laughs) Brett Wright, congratulations. Oh, goodness gracious. Brett Wright. He's a winner. I, I think I've we've given Brett Wright some prizes before. He's a winner often, mistake. that's for sure. Oh, you guys, you winners. Uh, no, was not requiring Snapdragon. Uh, will accept 670. Thank you, Brett. All right. Um, were you messing with my questions here? No. Oh, did I just mess something up? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. There. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I think I kept him messing with my stuff. Just All right. To type in a new tab, I think. Anyway, sorry. That's all right. All right. Fixed. Brett Wright, congratulations. Let's go ahead and go with question number four as the show comes to a screeching halt. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Question, question yeah. number Technical four. Difficulties. Question number four going up now. All right. What did Samsung call its lineup of Android powered cameras? These were other some CES babies that I absolutely adored. Uh, the first one especially, but I really wanted this what, to be a thing. Yeah. Yeah. What did Samsung call its lineup of Android-powered cameras? Junk. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Nick Fisher. I think uh, Nick Fisher was there. I'm gonna have to send you just five bucks, dude. That was awesome. <laughs> Brandon and Nick Fisher, both Fisher winners this week. I see Nick Fisher. <laughs> yeah, Nick Fisher for me. Oh goodness gracious, junk. 
<laughs> yeah, Jason Green almost deserves something just for saying junk. Uh, That's so great. Funny. Nick Fisher, Galaxy <laughs> Camera is the correct winner. Yes, uh, thank you. I remember like when it came out. And it, they put like this giant, I think it was like a 1080p screen on it. And they put this stupidly overpowered processor in it. And it was going to be awesome. And then it just wasn't. Because they, they made you flip between, I think, like a weird camera UI and the regular Android UI. It was almost a cool idea that just did not, uh, it didn't actually work out. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't, I forget what they did with the second, but either way, the first one was awesome. I mean, it literally was like an Android phone. It had mm-hmm. LTE, it had everything. It just had a really good camera. You would you would open up the camera app, yeah. and it, you know the lens would pop out and all that. It was totally sweet. But uh, yeah, it just it didn't really catch on, and they were expensive. And, uh, yeah, kind of a weird way, product. Nick Fisher, good job, Nick Fisher. Nick yeah. Fisher and Brandon Fisher are related. <laughs> We just happen to have two Fishers at the same time. Kind of a common name, right? Fisher? I feel like a... Spelled with the C, though? I don't know. Yeah. Cousins? Nope, not related. Okay. (laughs) Well, you guys should be. You're both winners. (laughs) And winners are usually... uh, Like the Gronkowski family, they're all winners. Oh, they're okay. Anyway, uh, question number five, please. (laughs) All right, question number five going up now. What version of Android did Sony's insanely priced Walkman NWZX2 run? So there's CES related questions. <laughs> yes. What version of Android did Sony's insanely priced Walkman run? It was like a thousand bucks or something like that. Uh, just looking for either the name or the version number. I'll take any uh, any variation of that. Oh, yeah, I still have I yet still to see, see the it. correct answer. I'm seeing a lot of version numbers being thrown out, but yeah. not the correct Wow, people Gosh. just start naming them. Yeah, you're, you guys are missing a big one. <laughs> that was like around for a couple of years. Oh, Nate. Nate, Nate. Yeah, finally, <laughs> Nate Clements with the correct answer of Jelly Bean. I'm I still haven't so seen shocked. the right number. Oh, Chris, Chris Palmero finally got the right number of 4.2, um, but we were taking it, Jelly Bean there too. If somebody just randomly bean shouted out Jelly Bean, you would have won. Yeah. Nate Clements, though, oh. with the Jelly Bean, the first Jelly Bean. There's lots of gingerbreads and honeycombs. You guys are funny. Android 2.1. <laughs> uh, I can't remember what year that was, but yeah, Sony drops this Walkman on everyone. And it was a grand. How expensive was that thing? It was like 1200 bucks when it was Maybe actually it launched. Was. They said it would be like around 1000 It was like 1200 And I think it was 2015, if I'm not mistaken. Crazy. It was uh, kind of Nick. a cool idea, but it was so oh, expensive. Yeah. And I'm sure it never saw a single update. I don't even. Do they ever sell that thing? I never. I don't know if I ever I'm saw a review of it or anything. It it. Crazy. <clears throat> Nick says twelve hundred. Yeah, that sounds right. Crazy. All right, crazy. so winners, I need you guys to email me. Email Tim. Yeah, email me. I've got. I got your sweet ten dollar Google Play credits waiting. Uh, <laughs> and I will get them sent over to you. And again, another message to uh, all of our would-be friends who are attending CES. Please hit us up if you're in Vegas or attending CES. Let us know. We're we're around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, if you're there, give us a little shout yeah. out. Find us on Why the not? Twitters, wherever. Just give us a shout. Uh, yeah, winners. Email Tim. His uh, email is in the chat. We'll get <laughs> you. Uh, we'll get you Google Play credit. Yeah. Fantastic. 2019 off to a solid start. 2019. Should be a should be such an exciting year. <laughs> We're gonna get to episode two hundred this year. We will get to episode two hundred this year in just do a couple of months. Too. Yeah, maybe a special guest. Bertzer wants the press pass for CES. I mean, I wish I could help yeah, you. They'll give a press pass to anybody. I mean, yeah. you could just start like a little, a little WordPress side, little side blog, a little side blog, <laughs> or be a YouTuber. I don't think it takes much, man. Yeah, you probably need about 600 subs as a YouTuber, and you could probably get into CES for free. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, uh, I think that's it for us. So, yeah, CES is next week. So, if our coverage is spotty and in and out, that's probably because we're walking around, talking to people, trying to uh, find uh, fabulous stories for you guys to consume. Uh, so, yeah, CES next week. Uh, 
we may have a show next Friday. We'll definitely be back in the home offices by next Friday. So uh, there's a good chance we do a post CES show. Uh, we will let you guys know. Uh, thanks for joining. Joy left. Peace.